Hello friends, in this video I shall be teaching you how to solve a numerical considering ISLM together. So guys, uh, we've been given some information like we have C, we have I, we have G, we also have taxes, we have MD, we have nominal money supply and we have price. Well, uh, before I take this question up, uh, it will be handy if I can convert all of that in terms of a generic equation as well. This, my dear friends, can be seen as C bar plus C Y D. This can be seen as I bar minus B R. Well, this can be seen as G bar. This is just a proportional tax. This can be seen as K Y minus H I. So you must be aware that C is, is as a function is, you know, it, it looks something like this C bar plus C Y D investment as a function looks like I bar minus B I G being an autonomous thing is, uh, you know, shown as G bar and M D is K Y minus H R. So, I should cut the question. Suppose hum ko solve karna hai equilibrium level of income. That is we need to solve equilibrium level of income given this information. Well, guys, in order to understand equilibrium level of income, or I should say, in order to solve equilibrium level of income, you must understand that equilibrium income occurs where goods market and money market they both are in equilibrium. So the, the steps to solve that equilibrium income will that starts with first solving for IS. Well, we all know that IS stands for a goods market. So goods market equilibrium occurs where y is equal to ad that's aggregate demand or you can say y is equal to c plus i plus g so now what we are going to do is we're going to use the information given to us c well c is given as 100 plus 0.9 yd well my dear friends yd stands for a disposable income so disposable income is income minus taxes plus transfer receipts in this case, uh, what we have is taxes, no transfer is it. If it was there, I would have taken that as well. I, I is given as what? 600 minus 30i, yeah. And uh, G is given as um, 300. Now, we need to solve the whole thing in terms of income. So see what I'm going to do now. Well, first 100, uh, uh, 700 and this, this becomes 1000. Solving it, I'm gonna be ending up with 0.6y, and this will be minus 30i. Now, guys, what you need to understand is you need to solve this in terms of income. So, y minus 0.6y should be 1000 minus 30i, that will be 0.4y is equal to 1000 minus 30i. Now, in terms of y, it should be written, I'm sorry, it should be written as this. And in terms of y, what we are going to get is this. y is equal to 2500 minus 75i. Uh, this is just the IS equation as they say. In order to get the equilibrium level of income, guys, we need to uh, now solve it for LM. And then we'll, we'll you know, compare both IS and LMs together. So I hope this is clear to you. I have just used this information C, I and G and I have solved that in terms of Y. I hope that makes sense to you. Now we are going to LM. Ke liye. So first we are now going to go for the LM thing. Well guys, we all know that you know LM, well it occurs in the money market. And when we talk about a money market, what we need to understand is it occurs where money demand is equal to money supply. Money demand, as we all know, is KY minus HI and MS is real balance, which is M upon P. So using the information given in the question, MD is given as 0.4Y minus 50I, whereas this is 1040 and this is 2. So uh, solving it further, what I am going to get is this. Now again, I'm going to solve this in terms of y. So y shall be equal to 520 upon 0.4 and that shall be what 50i upon 0.4. And if I were to, you know, solve this further, what I am going to get is 1300 plus 125i. So that 
again my dear friends have been solved in terms of y but then this is for ln so now comes the real part that is how to get to the equilibrium level of income well mera bachcha in order to get equilibrium level of income what you need to do is you need to equate both is and ln side by side is is equal to ln if you remember i our is equation was 2500 minus 75 i and then what was our lm equation well it was 1300 plus 125 i right right guys so now you just need to solve it and uh, once you, you know try and solve this what you are actually going to get is this i is equal to 6% why well uh, it is pretty simple it will be 200 i it will be you know 1200 and i shall be 6% so now you must be wondering but sir where is the income we haven't really found the equilibrium level of income well it's coming guys you can actually find equilibrium level of income by using this rate of interest either in is equation or lm equation uh, i'll teach you both in paper you can either do it through is or through lm whichever you please So just put that over here, and what you are actually going to end up with is this two zero five zero. Ah, you can also solve it with LM. So it will be thirteen hundred plus one twenty five into six, and my dear friends, your income is still going to be two zero five zero. So that is your equally variable level of income. So first solve it for IS, then solve it for LM, equate them together, and then. whatever rate of interest you get you need to use that rate of interest either in the is equation of yours or the lm equation of yours and uh, you'll get your equilibrium level of income now what i what i am actually going to do is uh, we can have a diagram based on the information uh, which actually should help us more uh, in understanding the concept well it was is which is which is downward sloping we all know lm is upward sloping that we know uh, here we take what rate of interest right and here we take income that's equilibrium level of income so i is 6% and that is 2050 to abhi tak humne seekh liya how to get uh, how to solve rather equilibrium level of income now in this particular diagram i'm going to teach you certain more things as well uh, which should come really handy um uh, suppose the question says if if government expenditure rises by um 50 uh, calculate calculate the magnitude of shift in is so if uh, pardon me for my writing please uh, the question says if government expenditure rises by 50 calculate the magnitude of shift in is okay so i'll first of all you know need to tell you the formula of uh, magnitude and shift in is well if you want to actually know what is the magnitude of shift in is you need to use a formula which says delta g into alpha g delta g into alpha g we'll we'll show this uh, diagrammatically as well but for now i'll be focusing on this well in order to understand this or rather solve this i'll first go for alpha g well we all know that alpha g is multiplier the formula was 1 upon 1 minus c 1 minus t remember remember yeah so if i were to solve this i would have got this as 0.9 and this as 1 by 3 How point nine? How one by three? No problems. I'll first show you. See, this was the question. C is point nine. What about T tax? Well, guys, it's one by three, and that's precisely what we have actually gone with. But this is what you get. Now, um, if I want to solve it further. I'll be having this as nine by ten into two by three, right? Solving it further, I'll I'll be getting two point five. So that's alpha g multiplied. That's two point five. But mind it, this is just alpha g you have got. Uh, if you want to, you know, uh, calculate for magnitude of shift in IS, then uh, we have still a long way to go. Abhi hamen aur bhi solve karna hoga. 
So for magnitude of 15 is yes, what we need to do is what was delta G? Well, it was a 50. What is alpha G? Well, 2.5. So you solve it and you get 125. So that's magnitude of 15 is. Uh, now the catch is uh, we should be understanding it with the help of a diagram as well. So there I go. That's the shift in IS. And then um, if the rate of interest would have been constant, this is what you would have got. Uh, 2050 plus 25, it would have been 2175. 2050 plus 125, uh, I can write that for you. This amount is 2050 plus 125. That 125 is this one. Yeah, 125. So this is uh, the magnitude of a shift in IS. Is ke under ek aur bhi cheez aati hai numerically jisko ap solve kar sakte. That's called crowding out. Uh, fiscal multipliers se hum usko prove kar sakte hain. But then um, I'll be teaching you that uh, numerically as well. But uh, that will come after you go through my video of uh, fiscal policy and monetary policy. So I'll be teaching you how to you know, solve a crowding out here or how to solve a fiscal multiplier or a monetary multiplier for that matter. But for that, uh, uh, it's better, it is advisable that first you, you know, go through my video of fiscal policy and monetary policy and then come back at this, uh, uh, the next video. So, so far, uh, in order to understand ISLM, you first need to go through the Canadian model basic video and then the IS video and then the LM video and then you should be, you know, coming up uh, at this particular video. After that, you'll be you'll be going for MP and FP video, monetary policy and fiscal policy. And after that, I'll again come back at the numerical and will teach you how to solve a crowding out as well. Uh, because uh, once you know the concept, it will be even more you know interesting to understand. But for now, I can add some formulas here to help you with certain bits of ISLM numericals. So, for example, uh, you wanted to know about uh, slope of IS, slope of IS. So, if you have gone through my theory theory video, uh, I, I there taught you that there are primarily two factors affecting slope of IS, B and alpha G. And uh, going by that, and uh, a bit of mathematics will help us. And this is the formula of a slope of IS. So, if, you, if the question is there asking for uh, the slope of IS, and this is how you can solve it, 1 upon B uh, into alpha G. So, so far you have understood how to solve equilibrium level of income, equilibrium rate of interest, and then uh, magnitude of shift in IS as well. Slope of IS, I've just uh, tried uh, to explain how to solve this as well. So, uh, same with LM, uh, we can, you know, use uh, some formulas for LMs uh, as well. Now guys, similarly, you can also solve slope of LM. So if it is there in the question, that is, you know, you've been asked to solve as the, for the slope of LM, you can simply use K upon H. Well, now guys, uh, if you want more questions to practice, you can WhatsApp me at my number, which is this, and I'll be happy to give you a lot of questions to practice that is solved questions so that uh, you you'll, you'll also be having the answers uh, which should come really handy for you now the next video will be about fiscal policy and monetary policies those crowding out those liquidity traps and all of that thing it should be a should be really fun and after that i'll again give you a numerical video but uh, in that video i shall be teaching you how to solve numerically the crowding outs uh, and the you know liquidity traps numerically so guys, uh, for now, uh, you should be practicing this particular question and uh, these many things which I have taught you. If you want to practice more, as I just told you, you can WhatsApp me at this number and I shall be happy to help you.